Starting next week, people in France will be banned from wearing abayas in state-run schools. The French government's decision is being met with mixed reaction. Now, abayas are a long, loose-fitting, full-length robe, and they are typically but not exclusively worn by some Muslim women. But France has a long history of banning religious symbols in state schools. CBS News foreign correspondent Chris Livesay joins us now. Chris, the French have this concept of laïcité, right, which is this secularism. It's a long-standing principle. It's been going on for 100-plus years in France. And this is not new. They've banned veils before. They've banned, banned niqabs, which is the facial covering. But why is this latest ban causing so much contention? Hey, Christine and Lilia. Well, it's controversial for a number of reasons, but you know, if you talk to uh, Muslim activists in France, they'll tell you that the garment isn't ostentatiously Muslim, and that's uh, that's the word that's that's used a lot when talking about it in France right now because of the law that bans any ostentatious display of religion. The uh, education minister of France says that schools need to be a sanctuary for secularism. Um, however, the these garments, while they're very uh, popular and commonplace in a lot of Gulf states, Muslim countries, many say they're not explicitly Muslim and that therefore this this law is, is being abused and taken out of context. But when you talk to a lot of school administrators in France, they were the ones actually calling for some kind of clear legislation to make their job easier because they were seeing what they said was an uptick in the number of students coming into class wearing these garments and uh, they just simply didn't know what to do about it. It fell into a gray area. So for the most part, they're actually happy that they have some clarity as to how to move now uh, with, uh, with these garments. You know, as you mentioned, some are accusing the government of fueling Islamophobia, citing a previous law that they claim specifically targets Muslims. How are lawmakers responding to those claims? Lawmakers are actually split on this um, within the left. So on the right side of the aisle, uh, lawmakers are, are universally in favor of it. But on the left, there's this very interesting split. Some say that this is you know, targeting Muslims, but then others look at it as being a, a defense of one of those ideals of, of, the, of modern day France, which is this concept of laicite or secularism. And you know, it's, it's a, uh, this goes back to the founding of the country, to the French Enlightenment, to the, to the French Revolution. Uh, the law itself that actually, you know, bans these types of symbols goes back to the 19th century. Uh, and then more recently, it was, it was updated in 2004 specifically to apply to, to headscarves. Um, and so when you look at it through that lens, it, it, is it being not specifically for any one religion, but to protect a sacred space, you know, the public space, which is supposed to be, you know, un, uh, unadulterated, shall we say, by by anything uh, religious, um, then it helps you understand why people on both sides of the aisle, or actually specifically on the left, uh, might might be divided uh, on this issue. It's a very interesting debate. Chris, the issue to me seems like okay. This concept of laïcité, as you mentioned, it's supposed to protect, and it, it it bans any outwardly religious symbols in public spaces to keep them secular. But wearing a loose-fitting dress is not necessarily religious, as you mentioned. I mean, especially uh, with the fashions that are happening right now. I mean, mm. frankly, I bought an abaya to wear to a trip to Saudi Arabia for work, and then I wore it a couple of weeks ago to a friend's christening at a church because it's in fashion right now. And it's I not don't overt. Okay. It's not you know explicit. It's not. It, and you all, it's, it's also just loose fitting. Right. It strikes me once again, almost in the opposite way of trying to dictate what women are wearing and how they are dressing their bodies. Yeah. How are they going to enforce this without telling someone who's wearing a long peasant dress that they also have to go home and change? Sure. Now, that problem, of course, falls on schools. A lot of teachers, different from administrators, don't uh, agree uh, with this ban because, as you said, you know, if you're going to apply it to a bias, what exactly is the definition of an abaya? Do we have to apply this to all loose-fitting garments. Um, a lot of administrators say, however, this really wasn't about religion at all, per se. It had a lot to do with, with young people wanting to push the boundaries. And that's something that 
teenagers are are prone to do. You think about, you know, when, when I was growing up and going to high school, it was girls wearing spaghetti strap dresses, you know, and this was the big debate that was taking place in my high school, at least. So in that broader context, you can understand, uh, you know, what how, how students, you know, whether it's religion or, or something else that's driving them to simply push the boundaries. You, you have to really be a student in France to understand the question here, but clearly it struck a nerve. And, you know, it always comes down to the teachers having to implement something that is unimplementable. <laughs> Chris Lifsey, thank you.